tutorial, we're going to look at how to set up video content analytics on a Luma DVR or NVR. This tutorial is assuming that your cameras are all installed and all configured for 24 hour recording already and that they've been aimed properly. So let's get started. We'll go to the settings menu and the first step is going to be to remove the default recording which is just based on the pixels changing to a certain extent. This creates a lot of noise and a lot of unwanted events and is pretty useless when you're actually looking for footage of interest. I'm just going to hit clear all and then uncheck this advanced motion box and save. I've already done this for the other cameras but normally I would need to go through each camera and repeat the same process it's a little tedious, but it only takes a few seconds to do it. Now we'll go to Smart Motion. <clears throat> and I'll see my options for VCA events. This is the front door to the house, and I'm going to start with a line cross detection. Clicking Draw Area, we'll put a line up in the middle of the screen. I can then drag the endpoints around to my desired area. It's important to note here that the camera needs to be able to see the object before it crosses the line. So putting it in front of this front door wouldn't really be useful because it's not really going to tell that there's an object there before it's already across the line. Giving it a little bit more space is going to have a much higher likelihood of capturing the events that you want to see. You also want to overlap things that are in the background like this wall a little bit because a person standing in this image might actually appear mostly in front of this wall and not on the ground. So you've got to keep in mind the camera's perspective when you're drawing lines. Because on this wall that's in the foreground, I can just come right up to the side. I'm then going to adjust the sensitivity. It starts off at 50. In this case, I've got a pretty controlled area with just a patio with not a lot of things that aren't of interest happening. So I'm going to set that sensitivity pretty high. I'll hit save there. I see the confirmation in the corner and I know that this is saved. Arming schedule by default should be 24 hours and I would probably leave everything like that unless you have a specific circumstance where you don't want to create events during a certain time or you're having a problem at certain times of day. Linkage method by default it's going to create a event flag on the timeline in the live view screen. If you wanted to, you could also check this box to have it bring this particular camera up full screen when that event is tripped. If the homeowner has a live monitor or if they'd like to keep their camera feeds on the TV, this is neat. If you really wanted to be uh, sure you're aware of what's happening, you could have an audible event or um, send an email, but that's probably going to generate more noise than anyone realistically um, wants to hear. I'll hit save to make sure that setting saved. On the porch here, I'm going to use intrusion de detection instead of line cross. I've got a big area here. People might come from multiple directions, and a line cross just isn't the best tool for this. I'm going to click draw area again, and I'm going to click a few corners here. I'm not going to try to go too far to the end of the driveway because the camera won't really pick up an object that small. It's kind of sketchy even here. This is probably a pretty good area to monitor. It doesn't really matter that this post is going through because it's a stationary object and this rule, um, that post shouldn't be a problem for this rule. Unfortunately you can only have four corners. A lot of times it would be useful if you could have more points in your area than that, but these cameras don't allow for that. Threshold here is very helpful in reducing false alarms. This is the minimum amount of time an object has to be in this box to trigger the event. Setting this to at least one second is going to help reduce things like a fly in front of the camera um, or a moth late at night that quickly takes up most of the screen and then goes away. This is the kind of thing that generates a lot of false alarms, especially at night. Because I raised this to one, I'm also going to raise my sensitivity a little bit higher. Uh, to 60 from its default of 50. 
at the save before going on to the next camera. In the driveway, I could probably do either an intrusion detection or line cross. If I did a line cross by the actual gate, I would get cars that are coming through, but I wouldn't get anybody milling about or exiting the garage. So I'm going to do a, a region of interest. This is an area where it would be helpful if I could draw more points, but unfortunately I'm going to have to accept it as a square or quadrilateral. I'm going to make sure my sen the threshold is at 1 and I'll raise my sensitivity a little bit and it's safe. I'm not going to use any other linkage aside from the flag on this, but if I wanted to, that's where I'd go. In the exit gate, I'm going to go back to line cross because I don't really have a very big area to do intrusion detection. I'm going to put it back here and overlap my borders a little bit. And I'll probably leave my sensitivity at 50. There is sun, as you can see, and trees near here, so I don't want it to be too sensitive and accidentally pick up a lot of noise. Because this barbecue area is right outside a door, I'm going to use area of interest or area intrusion detection and draw my area of interest on this whole patio so that I can get somebody coming out of this door or we're just walking through the patio uh, in either direction. I'm not going to try to go down here because it's there's shadows and the objects there are just too small for the camera to reliably recognize those people. And I know I've got another camera that I can use to pick that up. This is an area that's going to be hard to have any rule work effectively. I know that I don't have any entrances that I'm actually concerned about here. I'm recording this 24-7, so I'm really just creating these flags to try to help me sort through a lot of video. And because this is mostly planter um, and a grassy area, I don't think it's actually useful to create a VCA event here at all. So I'm going to go to the next camera. This is the other side of that same patio, and I'm going to draw a similar box outside these doors. Again, this would be an area that would be helpful if I could draw a box with more corners, but unfortunately, four is all I have. To make sure my sensitivity is at least at one, and because this is a covered patio, I'm going to raise my sensitivity very high uh, to 65 and maybe even 70, because I don't expect to have a lot of false alarms here. Last is a camera on the side of the house. And for this, I'm going to use line cross detection, which works pretty well in these scenarios. I'm pretty confident somebody's going to be going north to south. I'm going to put this line right outside the door and overlap it right into the hedge so I can pick up events like this guy walking by. I'll leave my sensitivity at 50 in this case. The last step is to review your events and see how well you've done. You'll need to wait a little while for some time to pass after these rules have been created to start to see what kind of results you get. An hour is usually enough to start to get a general idea, but really you should also review 24 or 48 hours later to see over a day what kind of events you get. If I look at this driveway, I'll start to see any ticks that were created by VCA rules. There's one right here. That might have been when they created the rule. Oh, there it is. So that looks like it worked pretty well. It triggered when this gentleman walked through the box. But to get a clearer idea, I really want to click on each of these cameras and hopefully see that my noise has been reduced and I've got good events. You can see on this driveway camera, before we started creating names, there's just a ton of noise and that isn't really helpful at all. But once we do that and we get down to a small number of very accurate events, 
this is much more useful. We want to target around 90% of actual events and 10% false alarms. We don't want to err on the side of uh, having more actual events than are recorded. So we're going to always have some false alarms, but we want to try to cut that down to a pretty low percentage to make it easy to find what you're looking for. That's the end of this tutorial.